Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and today we are looking once more at this gate, this drawbridge here, at the entrance to our model of Tracy and Laura Hickman's Castle Ravenloft from their 1983 I-6 Dungeons & Dragons supplement. So, I'm looking at this and I'm like, hmm, I want this door to go up there. And I talked to you guys a little bit two episodes ago about having the doors kind of come out from these mechanism rooms on either side. So you see this line of wood here? I was thinking, like, what if I had pistons push that all the way into here? And it's like, well, that seems pretty okay. But having the five pistons extend actually gets really problematic. So I started looking at it, and I realized, well, my original plan had been to have the sand or brown concrete powder just fall down straight from here. But I can only fit eight blocks worth of concrete powder in this space. So that's that's not good. You know, this is a 19 block tall door. So I actually need more than double this amount of concrete powder to fall. How do I do that, you know? Because, like, I could just have something knock out this block. But once again, look at how broadly insufficient that is. Oh, that fell on a torch. Okay, so in terms of, like how to do a demonstration. That's a little bit disappointing, but the whole point of this is that the plan doesn't work. So let's try this again without the torch down there, just to show you what we're looking at. Broadly insufficient, but in a more visually clear way. So, you know, I could look at that down there and I could think, man, this is, this is going to be terrible. Like, that's not a closed drawbridge. That height is, is not. But I got thinking, what if I had a way to accidentally teleport myself poorly and then actually have more blocks fall than just those eight? But how do we get more blocks than just those eight to fall here, right? Well, what if we had another stack of blocks right here? What if we had eight more blocks right here? And if we had three more blocks right here, okay? So, and then we just had pistons that pushed them onto the hole that was right here. That could be viable. Now, I'm going to have to make this entire walkway segment right here a little bit longer, but not longer, wider, and in order to accommodate the additional machinery. And I'm going to have to figure out a triggering mechanism that can be operated from the castle dining room over there because in the story the drawbridge doesn't close I believe until you enter the dining room or possibly until you leave it so there is that but on the whole I think the brown concrete powder will serve visually as a clear indication that this p exit is closed now what do we do to get this built I was thinking like I could start just throwing pistons and stuff in place over here but you know what this is a pretty high-profile entrance area to the castle, and I don't want to break anything. Like, I was like, what if my pistons just, like, punch a hole in this over here? And luckily, I started talking to some folks, and it turns out that apparently pistons cannot push leaves. So just to show you the value of having these leaves here... Wait, did that still... Did it destroy the leaves? Okay, that's not good. Somebody else told me that if I put a furnace here, that, okay, see, that's actually what we're looking for. There's a few mechanisms we're going to have to design for this to work. One of them is the trap door mechanism that will drop the first eight blocks. Then, after a delay, because, you know, these eight blocks, eh, they're all right. They're, they're all right. But, you know, after these first eight blocks, we need to have another mechanism that kicks in that starts triggering a pulse repeatedly to push these additional blocks down onto here. And then we need a machine that feeds us health so we don't die because we keep jumping down. But core concept, this should work. It's, I don't know exactly what it all looks like. How do I make the uh, blocks here pull back out? I probably need slime pistons for that to retract. Actually, I could use normal pistons if they're initially powered and then depower. But either way, building all of this right here in this space is not clearly optimal. I think we need to head over to the Jolo deck. Time skip. 
Hidden deep inside the Red Sky Base sign is the Jolo Deck, my top secret laboratory where I can work on things like the facades of buildings that I might never finish, or complex bridge door things. So, we've got our castle actually in view right over there, but you know what? This is a much cleaner place to make a mess because we're not ruining the castle and breaking it if we screw up, right? If my pistons accidentally knocked out that front wall there, I'd be pretty mad. So, let's go ahead and start figuring out what this needs to look like to be a proper test setup. A gray wool wall emulates the front of our drawbridge wall. We've got a furnace buffer that will stop pistons from accidentally knocking that out. We've got a trapdoor that will allow the first round of concrete powder to fall through. That's based on a signal from an inverter here. And in addition to all of those things, we've got a machining area here that represents the area inside the machinery towers. Now, right now, we're going to have an inverter that keeps this, like, door closed so all this stuff doesn't fall. But ultimately, we'll have a trigger outside of there that is, oh, that's not how that's going to work at all. I think we actually, in, in order for this to function as an inverter, we need to actually have this be on top of a thing like this. See, now it's out. Okay. Now, you might say, but Joe, you didn't have all those fall through. Well, yeah, part of why I wanted to do that is to demonstrate why if this cycles, we need to have these furnaces here so those pistons don't just punch a hole in the front wall there. That is going to be really bad to have. Big old holes in front walls, not the purpose of this structure. Because this could very easily have been just, hey, I'm going to build this whole thing, and then it's going to smash my castle's walls. I've added a second row of pistons behind the first one, and what that does is allows us a kind of ability to feed more blocks into here once this first row has fallen. So let's go ahead and fill this up and then demonstrate what that looks like. So the way we have this set up now, we have two separate mechanisms. We have an initial trapdoor that'll drop 80 blocks of our, of our gate. Um, so if we just power this, that door opens, and all those blocks fall through, right? That is almost half of the number of blocks we need. However, we will then have a second mechanism back here that is going to have to be repeatedly triggered in order to push these forward. So each time a row falls, they're then pushed out and over. And now we are up to 16 blocks. Let's go ahead and enter pearl across here and just kind of get a sense of what does this look like. Hey, that is a good portion of a door, right? Now, the that might only be 14 blocks, but hey, still, core concept. We fit a lot of blocks that have formed one flush wall into a very narrow space, and we've done it in such a way where the actual control mechanisms that will actually ultimately handle the pulses and determine when to stop firing this can fit off to the side in our towers up here. That's probably a terrible enderpearl throw. And now I'm nearly dead. Yay! So, anyway, I think we have figured out enough of this to go start uh, implementing this in the towers and the uh, walls themselves. So, let's go ahead and pack up what we've got here and head over that way. Time skip! Well, on this snowy morning, I have gone ahead and I've set up basically what we built in our Jolo deck in place above the castle. Now, one thing I've done is I've added a third tier on this additional level that will drop the last three or so um, kind of, uh, what do you call them? Not torches. It'll drop the last three uh, concrete powders down into there. And we're going to have right now separate triggers for each of these things, basically. And that's okay. You know, oh, I'm realizing I need a additional furnace at this piston level here. And I don't need any furnaces at this level because there's no pistons. The furnaces really only serve to block pistons from overshooting if they're aligned properly. So we're going to leave that there as is. And why don't we hop up here a little bit. Now that we're at the proper level, we will replace those furnaces. Because I was just thinking, if I fire this now, um, if I fired that third row there improperly now, it would accidentally offset the bridge too far. And we do not want to do that. So, 
we can set that up like so. And then for decorative purposes, just kind of cover that up. We don't need it to look like a furnace. We just need it to be a furnace. And we'll set up uh, additional glowstone here and here just to deter mobs spawning while we work. Okay, so. At this point, if I was to accidentally trigger this third row too early, right? Let's, how would I, I need a block, I need a place to do it. Um, I accidentally triggered that th whole third row too early. Well, you know what? This one couldn't actually push because of the uh, piston there. Or, because of the furnace. Piston doesn't break front wall. Which is perfect for me. So, I'm going to go ahead and set this up with a more formal mechanism that can be more easily remote controlled and wired underneath the castle. But for right now, like, I'm, I'm really pumped about this. This is working really well. By placing this final piece of black glass here, we've established kind of a viewing window through which we can watch the entire mechanism operate. Now, what we need to do is have this happen in three stages. The first stage is going to be triggered by this wire down here, and that's going to pull out that first set of pistons, and all of these pieces of concrete powder will come down. Then in the second stage, we are going to have this repeater be triggered briefly, and how are we going to trigger it? We should probably use some sort of button, if I had to guess. You know, just, uh, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but I'm, I'm guessing button is probably the way to go on this. So in order to make this as deadly potentially as possible, we'll put the button on the side there, and then hopefully not botch that. So, I've set up this viewing area, and I've set up the rough logic for the components. This repeater here will fire a pulse that will trigger each of these piston rows, now, I've got two extra leads out of here that I'm not currently using, but if I wanted to have something fancy happen with sound effects or something, I could figure that out later. For right now, they mostly exist just to give, uh, to give me an additional kind of pause between things. Now, I don't know how long the pulse of a button is going to be exactly, so, I don't know, maybe I'm going to stretch these a little bit just to... Yeah, I don't know. Eh, we'll play with it. So, core concept. We're going to have button activated, or, well, see this thread here? That would, in theory, actually be activated way back in the dining room. But we don't want to activate it from there because it's hard to get to the dining room. And unfortunately, if I stand right here, it'll be hard to see, but there you... Okay, so that button was actually enough just to let that much fall. So really, when this is actually triggered, we need to have this be like a flip-flop where it enters a permanently uh, enabled state. Now, the best way to do that in Minecraft is via the magic of a uh, switch. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take these sticks, and we're going to run all the way down here. Then we're going to fly all the way down there. We're going to get a single cobblestone, and then triple it for fun. And then we will take this lever here. And, okay, just to make sure that this actually works. Dang it, does that not reach all the way? It should reach all the way. Why doesn't it reach all the way? So it goes to that repeater. And it goes up to here. And then... Oh, it might be the inverse of what we need. Okay, so we actually need to not have this inverter here. We need to break the inverter. Set this up here. And then power that. Okay, so that switch will now let the last two uh, bits of concrete powder fall. No, it didn't. Dang it, switch. I'm coming for you. Nintendo might have made you seem family friendly. But, okay. So, why doesn't that turn that down? So those should, in theory, open now. So now that these are open, we can have the other two sets of pistons start firing in their loop. So, I do think the button should work for this. So we can just stand here. And in theory, that should complete the entire bridge. And then it'll automatically stop. I don't know why we got an extra piece of concrete powder there. But you know what? That's fine with me. What's not fine with me is that in the back being wrong. So in order to actually power this down when we're done with it, we will need to have another switch. We'll just turn that on and leave it on. And then I think when we turn it off... It should turn off the entire thing. Nope, didn't. I think we're going to have to break this in order to reset it. Okay, good. All reset. 
So one thing we know now is that we absolutely need to... What happened with that one? Let's go over there and take a look. Like, did this completely fail to deploy um, into the front of the castle here? And we can't see. Dang it. Video games are hard. Yeah, so this one here, I'm guessing, just didn't get enough power to push all the way out on that lower tier. So it was pushing from the top tier, but not on the bottom. And so let's go ahead and enter per... dang it. And ladder back out of here. Dang it. It's fine. We'll leave that. Haha, just kidding, it's gone. Great. So, um, it looks like down here we actually need a repeater much closer to there in order to get the uh, signal all the way across. So, now, just to verify that that actually did work. Great, so we've successfully debugged that part of the door. Okay, that to me looks like a closed drawbridge, with the exception of the fact that you can see the clearly visible and exposed drawbridge there. Now, in theory, the, um, you know, the people, the adventurers, the players, are only ever going to see the drawbridge from the other side, so it doesn't really matter to me if they can see this one. That is actually 100% okay. So let's go ahead, though, and hop over here and see what it looks like from in here. So, you know, you heard the drawbridge close. And we're going to have to put a wall on the back of this eventually. But yeah, okay. So you see that, you're like, uh-oh. Can't go back out that way. Yeah, that sells it. I'll take, I'll, I'll find that acceptable. Okay. That's, that's a win. So, we still have some undercastle wiring to do. To actually, like, run this signal all the way from, uh, here to the dining room, which I think I went ahead and put a post in somewhere. Why is there water there? I don't remember there being water there. Did a creeper blow up or something? Well, let's see. So if I break a block here, closer to the end, or to the edge, um, we can actually hop down here real quick and look around and, okay, so that pillar there is actually where the dining room needs to be. So, what we're going to do is we're going to hop up a few blocks here. And we are going to take this and kind of streamline the transition downward here. Well, I moved things around a little bit to ensure that we could get the wiring set up properly. But we've got an observer here now that will detect if this wire becomes permanently charged from all the way back in the dining room it'll send a pulse up to here to start rapid firing these two banks of pistons. This bank of piston will stay open because of the lever. Now, this is an example lever here. The real lever will be in the dining room, but we're on track to actually having the ability to drop some real drawbridge knowledge this episode. So let's go ahead and get this brown concrete powder loaded back in, and we can be underway. Don't want to use spruce wood planks. That would be terrible. Time skip. Let's experience the entrance of Castle Ravenloft here. You know, you come down the path, you go through here. Now, I'm really collapsing, like, several minutes of events. Oh, wait. You probably don't have all these torches that'll break the door test we're about to do there. You know, you go in through these main doors traditionally. Now, your players might not want to do that. They might be crazy. But, you know, you go through these doors, you go in here, you have the encounter in the dining room, and what's this? Your dungeon master throws the switch... Now that switch should trigger, boom, out there. Now you can't actually see this from the dining room, but those blocks are a-fallen. Okay, yeah, now from the dining room again, the players actually have no windows, so they'd have no way of knowing that that even happened until they fight their way back out of the castle and then confront the closed door. So... Yeah, good enough for me. Now, those pistons up there, they're still firing. I'm going to have to manually disable them for the time being. I haven't set up the timer to do so. But, core concept, we have a single switch you throw. 
that will, on command, slam the drawbridge shut. So, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of it. Well, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.